Hello everyone, Gav from Aston 74 here again today doing another Valve Hammer tutorial. This time around I'm getting around to another viewer requested tutorial and today I'm going to go into how you can create a wake up sequence as you would see in Half-Life 2 when meeting up with Alex for the first time or in Half-Life 2 Lost Coast and maybe even Portal as well. Um, although that's slightly different in terms of the placement so I'll probably get to that at the end of this tutorial but I'm in the Source SDK 2013 single player engine right now which is pretty much Half-Life 2 and I've got this setup here there's this house kind of in the middle of some you know wasteland or whatever and I've got the bed and a mattress here and also an overlay I'll get to that in a minute because that's just for placement purposes and what you may notice is that the bed's actually going through the floor and that is also uh, for, because of placement purposes uh, the idea is that we wake up from this bed but um, if everything's all on the same level then the player's view is going to go through the bed which doesn't look good so what I figured out is that the bed has to go eight units below the floor where you want the player to stand hence why that's where the overlay is that's where the player is going to be standing when this animation plays out so I'm gonna do the sort of teleport method for this and so because I've already done this I've got the uh, entities up on this top right screen here basically they're out here this is what the setup is going to look like it's not too complicated so we'll select info player start and I'm just going to put it outside of the house where it cannot be seen and so I'm just going to stick it there and also I'm going to rotate it around as well because I'm screwing up with the angles obviously but um, if I just show you the properties it's facing downwards so 0 to 70 0 and then we're going to go to the texture browser and I'm just going to search for the trigger texture um, because we're going to create a trigger teleport around the player so 32 by 32 72 looks good to me should encapsulate the player control T type to an entity and then trigger teleport is what we want and I'm going to call this um, blackout 2 teleport because I've already done the setup I've not deleted the existing entities so I'm going to have to call it something different start disabled we want to set that to yes and we're going to come back to this for the remote destination option which is to specify where the player is going to teleport to make sure we select clients in the flags as well that's very very important and that is going to come back to that is what we're going to do might do that now actually is just create the uh, tele teleport destination info teleport destination uh, countdown oops wrong entity uh, da, 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 yeah. info teleport destination that's what we want so we're going to go over here and I'm going to place it exactly on the info overlay which I've placed so that is going to go there and it's going to go there just make sure it's all uh, you know snapped as it's supposed to be which it is and I'm going to call this blackout to teleport so as you see because I'm lazy I've already uh, done something like this so actually teleport this there we go call it that um, and then go back to here the trigger teleport at remote destination is now teleport destination so that's that and next we're probably going to get to the most awkward part about this tutorial because we're going to be creating a prop dynamic but the thing is it's completely invisible so we can't really see what's going on but we're going to go to world model and we're going to i we'll need to bring the model browser over here um sorry it's not the best looking but we're going to use black out i believe it is yeah even though we're fading in we're actually going to be uh using the black out model and this is what i mean as you can see from this view um it's only this tiny little invisible box that you have to select but I guess the idea of the model is that it's actually a sort of an attachment path and that's what uh, is going to happen here. 
and so I've already done the sort of setup for this already you want the origin to be where this overlay is so pretty much where the teleport destination is but because you start from here where my mouse is hopefully you can see on the left hand side of the player what we're going to have to do is rotate this around 180 degrees like so so it's going into the bed while the player is away from it um, then we want to disable shadows we set that to yes we're going to name this um, I'm going to call it blackout 2 and um, I think that's everything that we need to do here uh, but then we need to go into output and we're going to add an on animation done and we're not we haven't made this yet but it's going to be blackout to cam and we want to disable that and then on animation done we want to have our blackout to teleport to enable and then disable after 0 0.01 seconds so now we'll get onto that see i did all of that now because trying to select the uh you know prop dynamic that's invisible is a pain in the ass as you can see i'm clicking in the area that it's supposed to exist at and i can't select it so you can select it if you get it just right like that but you know it's just a pain in the ass to deal with so after this we're going to create a oh jesus i'm screwing this up a point view control and we're not going to do anything with the angles of this we're just going to leave it as is i'm just going to snap it over there and so this is our blackout to cam so if we apply that then we should see that the input works which is good and then what we want to do in this case is um set its parent to be blackout 2 oh, i didn't name it wait it didn't name it blackout 2 are you kidding me i was on this is heresy i did i did say blackout 2 didn't i i did give it that name i'm not hallucinating am i why did it call it teleport i didn't say that i called it blackout 2 stupid ham editor okay there we go that should work now yeah blackout 2 it's parented to blackout 2 that's what's supposed to happen sorry for the uh fuck up there but uh, if we go over the flags, then we want to uncheck the existing flags. And the only flags we want to have is freeze player, then infinite hold time, and snap to goal angles. That's the only thing we want to do there. And then we want to create a end fade. So, I like so. And I'll just uh, move it to the other side of the player. Shift that up a little bit, Alt Enter, and this is going to be called Blackout to Fade. And then I think that's pretty much the settings, just a tick fade from in the flags. That's all we need to do there. And now we just need a logic auto, like so. And you can position this wherever you want to. I'm going to put that in front of the player, lift it up a little bit, Alt Enter, Output, and then on Map Spawn, we want Black Out to Cam in this case to set Parent Attachment to Vehicle Driver Eyes. I know I put a plus in there, but when you can't see what you're typing, um, it's not good you're gonna make mistakes but yeah, it's a vehicle driver eyes set parent attachment so that's what you do there then we want our blackout to cam to enable after that then on map spawn we want our blackout to fade to fade and then we want to do on map spawn uh, then it's gonna be blackout to set animation and then it's exit one now we don't want to do this immediately we want this after a little bit of a delay so i'm going to just set it to about two seconds um you can leave the delay however long you want you can set it to two or set it to three um and then that's 
pretty much everything that you have to do for this to work. So if I just go over to my already provided setup, I've decided to do it after three seconds, as you can see. So the fade is fade from default settings, default settings, flags are correct at our destination. There's nothing more there. Um, trigger is set to destination, start disabled, yes. Flags set to two clients and also our player start. There's nothing more that needs to be done on that front. So you can save and test this and what you should see is that the player should be waking up from the bed and then get teleported to the destination which is right where this teleport destination is and it should be a nice smooth looking transition. So if you give me a second what I'll do is I'll go to portal and do the exact same thing but just go over the details that are specific to portal. Okay everyone here I am in the portal editor. Um, one thing that's slightly different about this setup is that well because it's portal we have the bed. So I've only gone ahead and created a prop dynamic which is um, bed body reference .mdl, uh, with disable shadows set to yes. Another prop dynamic called bed cover, disable shadows, yes, and model of bed cover reference. And there's also the um, blackout prop dynamic as well. So if I just do that. Apologies everyone for the fuck up. Um, unfortunately, yeah, I was wrong with the model. You see in portal, there's actually a model called blackin.mdl, not blackout. So while blackout does exist in portal, you're supposed to use blackin.mdl and as you can see the setup is kind of what you want. Um, it's in line with the center and then the bottom of the model is just clipping through there. So again with the origin you can see where that is and you can move the player just to make sure you are perfectly in that position. Um, but I'm also going to add in the outputs that are necessary here. So there's on animation done. And this time we're going to do bed cover set animation closing then on animation done we want to have uh, the bed cover sound which we haven't made yet but we will make soon we want that to play sounds which it's not even going to identify that so just do it like so then another on animation done, it's the blackout cam, we're going to set that to disable and then on animation done, bed cover set default animation of idle. So that's what we're going to do there. That way we can just deselect the blackout prop dynamic and never have to deal with it again. So again the setup, I'm just going to do the info player start method this time instead of using the teleport. You can use the teleport if you want to. Uh, it's just that if you have a player with a sort of visible model then you might not necessarily want to have the uh, player visible. So just something to keep into consideration but the player is going to exit like so. Make sure it's perfectly aligned with the blackout model. Again, I've got a grid size of one because of how precise it looks in the guide, but that looks pretty good to me. Then on map spawn, bed cover, set animation, opening. And then this time it's after the delay you want. So I'm just going to set it to five now. Then we're going to do, we're just copy and paste that. Bed cover, set default animation, excuse me. That's going to be to open. Then we're going to, I'm going to copy and paste again, but this time it's bed cover sounds. I need to make the sounds. And that is going to be play sounds after five. And then last but not least, it's on map spawn, blackout, set animation, exit one after five seconds. So the last thing I'm going to have to do is make an ambient generic. Stick that to where the player is pretty much, just where the head is, why not? Stick in the guy's head uh, or the woman's head, whoever. Uh, so that's B 
bed cover sound, excuse me, I'm calling it the wrong thing. Bed cover sound, and the sound name is doors dot full close 14. Um, and then set the sound origin to be the bed cover. And I believe, if I've done everything correctly, that should be everything without any issues. Now you can go entity reports. Nope, it's check for problems. Uh, da, 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 alt P, no errors were found, which means that all of the inputs and outputs are correct. They all work as they're supposed to. Um, so that is pretty much the portal bed situation, if that's what you want instead. So yeah, that is the wake up bed from portal and a sort of wake up sequence in Half-Life 2. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it helpful. And um, I've got another Valve source code tutorial coming up soon, hopefully. Something I figured out relatively recently. So I hope to see you for that and whatever I decide to do next. So thanks for watching, take care out there, and see you for the next video.